Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Every Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding users that actively request confirmation message, messages and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called signups with two different columns, user ID and timestamp. User ID is the primary key for this table. Each row contains information about the signup time for the user with the ID, user ID. We are also given a second table called confirmations with three different columns, user ID, timestamp and action. The combined column user ID and timestamp is the primary key for this table. User ID is a foreign key with a reference to the signups table. Okay. Action is an enum of the type confirmed or timeout. Each row of this table indicates that the user with the ID, user ID requested a confirmation message at this particular timestamp. And that confirmation message was either confirmed or expired without confirming that is timeout. We are asked to write a SQL query to find the IDs of the users that requested a confirmation message twice within a 24 hour window. Two messages exactly 24 hours apart are considered to be within the window. The action does not affect the answer, only the request time. The order of the result does not matter. Okay, let's go through this example, right? So basically we have the signups table and then we have the confirmations table. And now we need to report the user IDs where a confirmation was requested irrespective of the action, right? So it was confirmed or timed out does not matter irrespective of the action within the 24 hour period we need to return the users which requested a confirmation message twice right so here if you look at it right so user id let's let's go through this example right so user id 3 you have okay so the first one was on 6th of january 2021 at 330 and 46 seconds and the next request was about seven minutes or six, seven minutes later, right? So obviously this is within the 24 hour period, like two requests within 24 hour period. So this should be in the output for seven. If you look at it closely, it is 20 after. So 12th of June, 2021, 1157 and 29 seconds. And then the next request was on 13th of June, 2021. 11.57 and 30 seconds, right? So that is 24 hours, one seconds later, right? So this is not in the 24 hour period, right? So seven shouldn't be included. Similarly for two, this is exactly 24 hour apart. And the question says that the 24 hour apart exactly is considered to be within window, right? So again, two is also going to be in the output. And similarly for six, right? So two, three and six should be in the output, right? And that is what we have. So basically, if you look, this question is very simple. All we have to do is for each of the users, we can try to, you know, arrange the timestamps in ascending order and then try to find out when the next request was. And based on that, we can see whether the next request was within the 24 hour period or after the 24 hour period or exactly at the 24 hour period. Right. So let's start developing the query. It will be more clear. Right. So from this table called confirmations, by the way, did you notice that you don't even need this sign up table to solve this question? Right. Because all you do need to do is, uh, you know, get that 24 hour period for different user IDs. Right. And you can do that using this confirmation table only. Right, you don't need this sign up table. So yeah, so from this confirmation table, let's return all the three columns and make a fourth column, which will be basically the next request time, right? Next request time. So to do this, firstly for each user, right? So partition by user ID, then order by timestamp, right? So let's, since we are using a window function, we need to write the over clause. So over partition, by user ID order by timestamp in increasing manner, right? And once you arrange them, right, then you basically find the next one, right? So how do you find the next one? You use the window function lead and for which column you want, find, want to find the next value, we need timestamp, right? So timestamp and let's alias this as next 
confirmation request time right let's alias this as so that it's easy to understand let this is not yet complete but let me just you know go ahead and run this to see what happens so here we have the four columns right three from this table confirmations and the four that we just created right next confirmation request time so user id timestamp action next confirmation request time so for this one right so for user id 2 22nd of january 2021 right so for user id 2 22nd of january uh, 2021 right you have this and then uh, this is the next one right so the next request is 23rd of january 2021 this much right for now again for, for this the next one was this one right for this obviously there is no third login uh there is no third confirmation request right so that is why you have null and similarly for all other user ids right so once we have this then what we can do let's store this in a common table expression right now from this common table expression what do we need to do is we need to keep only those rows or basically we need to only keep those users right where the next confirmation request time is between the timestamp and when you add 24 hours to that timestamp it should be between that right because that is what the question is asking you right that uh, user that's requested confirmation message twice within a 24 hour window so if i write where next confirmation request time right when next confirmation request time uh, between right so it is between the timestamp right between the timestamp and you need to add 24 hours to that timestamp right so how you can do that you can use the date add function right so date add then which column do you want to add the hours to so timestamp and then you need to write interval then 24 then hour right okay so basically what is this going to do so here you imagine the fourth column right fourth column you have next confirmation request time right so for this one it is going to have this value here right for this one it is going to have null similarly for all now when i am saying from this common table expression only keep those rows where next confirmation request time is between this value and adding 24 hours to this value right so obviously this next confirmation request time if it is between this timestamp column and the 24 hours addition to this then you are going to keep that row otherwise you are going to ignore right so once we have this then all we need to do is because in the output you need to return the user id right so you need to return user id okay there is still one thing remaining in this right but let me just go ahead and run this right so this is accepted our output is same as expected output right but can you think of a test case that even though this is green and accepted but there is still some one thing that might lead to a problem and i can show you that if i try to go and submit this right this is going to throw us an error why this is throwing you an error can you think of the reason so here if you see right the only difference that we have right uh, so the output that we are getting is this and the expected output is this one right so if you see everything is same except we have 35 twice right and that is the test case that we didn't you know took care of that it might be possible that one user can have two multiple logins on different dates but within those 24 hour period right so maybe i am a user i logged in today and then i logged in after let's say six hours today as well then tomorrow i logged in and then after let's say 15 hours i logged in again right so based on the query that we have written both of those rows are going to come right and when you are returning the user id the user id is going to be returned from both of those cases right and in the output you don't need repetition right so basically what you need to do is you just need to return distinct user id right so return distinct user id right now let's go ahead and run this 
so this is accepted again like uh, it was accepted before as well but now let's go ahead and submit it to see what happens so yeah this is accepted now right this is successful so now we took care of the that test case so yeah this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this problem this question was very simple all you had to do was firstly you don't even need one of the tables that is given in the question and secondly all you had to do was like you know find out the next confirmation request time and then make sure that that next confirmation request time is between the timestamp and when you add 24 hours to that particular timestamp because that is what the question is asking uh, requested a confirmation message twice within a 24 hour window and even if it is exactly 24 hours apart they are still counted as a window according to the question so you do that and remember to add distinct because if you don't then we discussed about a test case where you might have duplicate values in your output and you don't want that right so yeah, let me know in the comment section if you can think of a better way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video